Good day, Deep and Word family. Welcome to day 226 of our Bible study review. Today we're going through the Psalms 120 through 126. Psalm 120 is a Psalm of ascends. Your Bible may say degrees, but it's literally ascending up the mountain. We are ascending. We are climbing up the mountain. We are doing our best to get our way back home. Home is wherever our king is. And right now the king and the kingdom lives right here, but he promises to return here upon the earth. And so we're going to see these beautiful pictures being painted throughout these songs of ascending. Although Psalm 120 is not attributed to a specific author, I'm just going to start reading. It says right here, starting in verse one, in my distress, I cried out to Yahuwah and he heard me deliver my soul, O Yahuwah, from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. And then we walk into verses three and four, and it starts off with a question to the lying tongue and to the deceitful person. It says, what shall be given to you or what shall be done to you, O false tongue, sharp arrows of a warrior with coals of the broom tree. So they will receive their reward of lying, of deceit, of wickedness. Verses five through seven closes out Psalm 120. It says, woe is me that I have sojourned in Meshach or that I have dwelt among the tents of Kedar. And so this is basically saying I am a sojourner. I don't belong in these lands. I'm not in my homeland. Right here in verse six, it says my soul has long lived with those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. This is a picture of us, right? Because on this side, this is not our home. Our home is where our Adon is or where our Lord, where our master is. When he returns to claim what is rightfully his, right? The title deed of the earth, then our hearts will be at peace and we will be at home. But when we speak the truth of the Prince of Peace, we speak the truth of the kingdom, those who are outside of that covenant, those who are not in agreement with the truth, they bring war at your door. So we can definitely identify with this right here. Psalm 121 is another song of us sins. And if I was going to personally name this one, I would name it my help and my shield. But let's just read through the psalm, starting with verse 1. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come from? So that is the question. But the answer comes in verse 2. It says, My help comes from Yahuwah, who made heaven and earth. Verse 3, He will not let your foot slip. He who keeps you will not slumber. Verse 4, Behold, he who guards Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Now, if you have said yes to Messiah, you have been grafted into the covenant family. The covenant is cut with Israel, right? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. The covenant is not made with anyone else. So you must be grafted in to that covenant people. So when you're grafted in, you are part of this covenant and he guards those who guard the covenant commands. The covenant that was given at Mount Sinai was a picture of the wedding vows, right? So the husband is the covering. He's the one who protects and shields the wife. The wife comes in and what is her job? Her job is to be faithful unto her husband. The wife said, I do. So when you said, I do to the Messiah, you also said, I do to the father because the Messiah is the word of the Father. And so Messiah is not going to come to preach a different word, a separate word, or tell you to be disobedient to the Father. That's not it, people. That's not the truth. And I know that many people have heard that false doctrine for so long, but that is not the truth. And hopefully that is already sunk in to your heart at this point, especially on this Bible study. Verse five, it says, Yahuwah is your guardian. Yahuwah is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not harm you during the day, nor the moon during the night. Yahuwah shall protect you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Your translation may be being, right? But it's the same thing. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so if you will to do the will of the Father, you are completely submitted. And those who are submitted to his ways, because his ways are higher and his thoughts are higher, those who submit to that, they are completely protected and guarded. And even if you fall asleep in the ground, you will be preserved for the great day of the trumpet blast. You will be brought 
back to the land of the living and you will rule and reign with our Messiah. And you will notice new Jerusalem, heaven coming down to the earth. That is your promise. Verse eight caps off the truth that I just spoke. It says, Yahuwah shall preserve your going out and coming in from now and forevermore. So essentially, if we are hoping, we are hoping in the promises, we are hoping in the word of Yah. So our eyes remain on him and his word. And as we trust in that full heartedly, then he preserves us and he keeps us for all of his promises because all of them are yes and amen. Psalm 122 is another psalm of ascends and this one is attributed to King David. Let's read. It says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of Yahuwah. Our feet shall stand within your gates, O Jerusalem. So David is speaking to the land and specifically where the place where the name of Yahuwah is known and that is Jerusalem. Okay, so it says Jerusalem is built as a city that is designed for a multitude, right? So we know New Jerusalem is designed for millions, if not billions of willing people who are willing to follow Yahuwah by way of the sun. It says where the tribes go up, the tribes of Yahuwah as a decree of Israel to give thanks unto the name of Yahuwah. Verse five, there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Now I want to take you to Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, so that you can peek into the future about these thrones of judgment. So let's read. These are the red letters or the words of Messiah. Yeshua said to them, truly, I say to you in the regeneration, which is Jerusalem, when he comes, when he returns, it says, when the son of man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones. Now, this is in response to Peter's question, because Peter said, look, there are those who are rich and they do not drop what they have in order to follow you. But he says, we, on the other hand, we have dropped everything to follow you. And what shall we have in the kingdom? And so this is Messiah's response to them. And he says, you will be judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Yes, executing right rulings. Those judgments will be made in the earth when our Messiah returns. And how are those judgments based? Off of the law, off of the Torah of the Father. This was the Messiah's promise to the 12 disciples at the time and those who would become his disciples later on in the future. He says, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or fields for my namesake shall receive a hundred times as much and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last will be first, right? So if right now you are persecuted for your faith and you actually have lost friends or your family members have cut ties with you because you're walking in the truth of Torah, he says you will receive so much more because of his name's sake, because you're upholding the word of the covenant. He says you will be first during that time. All right, back to Psalm 122, picking up in verse six, it says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions sake, I will now say peace be within you. Because of the house of Yahuwah, our Elohim, I will seek your good. And so we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We have brothers and sisters in Messiah over there who are doing the work. Those who are upholding the words of the covenant and revealing the truth of the mediator of this renewed covenant who is our Messiah. Psalm 123 is another psalm of ascend, although this is not attributed to any specific author. If I was going to name it, I would name it Heavenly Gaze. Let's read it. It says, to you, I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens, behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, and as the eyes of a maiden to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look upon Yahuwah, our Elohim, until he has mercy upon us. Verses 3 and 4 finish out Psalm 123. It says, Have mercy upon us, O Yahuwah, have mercy upon us, for we have been completely filled with contempt. Our soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, it says, is exceedingly filled with the ridicule of those who are at ease and with the contempt of the proud ones. This is a picture of us telling the truth of the gospel of the kingdom that is coming to the earth. And we are definitely ridiculed 
all the time of those who are proud, of those who are living carnally, of those who reject the truth of his coming. They mock and scoff us. And so we continue to look where our help comes from, and we ask him to have mercy. And of course, we ask him for his kingdom to come quickly. Psalm 124 is attributed to King David, and the sentiment of the entire thing is if it had not been for Yahuwah, they would have been destroyed as a people long ago. It is because of him imparting his righteous laws and preserving his people that they still exist even till this day. All across the map, the seed of Jacob is present everywhere. And if it had not been for his promises, if it had not been for his wonderful mercy and kindness, that they would be completely destroyed like other peoples in the earth. He preserves his people. He preserved the line of David, right, from the tribe of Judah to bring about his only begotten son, the word of Yah, who is also the Passover lamb. He is the one who is the mediator of this renewed covenant, right? So as of right now, we have a deposit, a security deposit, which is the Holy Spirit. But we have yet to have our bodies changed so that we are made just like him, mind, spirit, and body. That is yet to come. We have yet to rule and reign with him. There are some promises that he has to fulfill. And so we are waiting. And he is preserving those who trust and believe in the salvation of Yah, who is his son. Psalm 125 is another psalm of ascends. And verses 1 and 2 is about the promises made unto you, the righteous ones. And then we see verses 3 through 5 are the promises for the wicked. Now, I'm only going to read the promises that are made for you and I. And it says, those who trust in Yahuwah shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides for." Ever. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so Yahuwah surrounds his people from now until forevermore. So if your heart truly trusts in Yahuwah, right, in his words and his commands, and you have the testimony, the witness of Yeshua, you are unmovable. You are unshakable. Even if your body meets the ground, the same power that raised Christ is the same power that will raise your loved ones, that will raise you if you happen to fall asleep at that time. You will be raised to live forevermore. Psalm 126. When Yahuwah restored the captives of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, Yahuwah has done great things for them. Yahuwah has done great things for us and we are glad. Verses 4 through 6. Restore our captives, O Yahuwah, as the streams in the Negev. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who goes forth and weeps, bearing precious seed to sow, shall come home again rejoicing, bringing his grain sheaves with him. As you read through Psalm 126, you may see the double reference here because it's definitely talking about those who went into the Babylonian captivity, but they returned home and they returned home glad. Now we know this is also pointing to the future because we will be gathered unto our Messiah at the great trumpet call and he will bring us to the land of Jerusalem. He's going to divide land plots and he's going to tell us where we're going to be living and we will be glad because rain, crops, everything will be in abundance. The world itself is going to experience restoration. It's going to be a beautiful, wonderful time of promise. We will finally stop the sojourning. We will be home because home is wherever our master, wherever our Lord, wherever our Yeshua is. That's where home is. Trust and believe that when we place our full confidence in our Elohim and in the words of his command, he guards our lives and he preserves us for that time that is coming. That is going to happen. I can hardly wait and I think about it with every passing day. I always recommend that you place your mind on those heavenly things and experience the peace that surpasses all understanding. Deep and Word family, that's all that I have for you today. Until tomorrow. Yeah, bless.